Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another astonishing episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This week's tale begins in 1940 with an alleged spirit medium named Claire Voyant. While Voyant's abilities were questionable, her practice did catch the attention of a powerful demon. One evening, while attempting to perform a seance, her clients, the Wagler family, doubted and demeaned her. Using his otherworldly power to influence her, the demon prompted Voyant to declare a satanic curse upon the Wagglers. And sure enough, as the three family members drove home, their car suddenly crashed. While his mother and sister died in the accident, James Wagler survived and swore vengeance on Claire Voyant, secretly goaded on by the unseen hand of Satan. That very night, James entered Claire's home and took her life with a single bullet. As Claire died, swearing to return, the devil appeared above her body and James ran, screaming from the estate. The satanic figure then claimed the woman's mortal frame and returned with it to his hellish dimension of Hades. While this demon identified himself as Satan, whether he is Marduk Kurias, Mephisto, or some other hell lord is unconfirmed. In either event, this devil resurrected Clairvoyant, imbuing her with demonic strength and powers as the Black Widow. Returning to Earth, the Widow's first order of business was to avenge her own death by killing James Wagler. Wagler's body was soon found by the police with the mark of the Black Widow burned into his forehead. Returning to Hell, the Black Widow was then appointed by Satan to be his personal assassin. Claire Voyant would subsequently be dispatched to Earth to eliminate specified targets. Evil men at the height of their corruption, allowing the devil to claim their souls at their most valuable. And with the rise of Nazi Germany, there was no shortage of souls for the widow to collect. When the United States entered the Second World War, Claire joined forces with the Allies under the pretense of simply being another costumed American crime fighter. With so many of them fighting behind enemy lines, the Black Widow was able to fit right in. In the final days of the war, Claire was one of a dozen heroes to infiltrate the SS headquarters. However, the Twelve stumbled into a trap set by the Nazis. Knocked out by a powerful sleeping gas, Claire and the others were placed into suspended animation, save for the robot Electro, which was simply deactivated. The Nazis had intended to study the Twelve, to learn what made superheroes super, and create a true master race. However, they had underestimated their enemies. Soon, Berlin was overwhelmed by Russian forces, and Hitler himself met his end at the flaming hands of the Human Torch. The Twelve were left in a hidden bunker and forgotten for over 60 years. That is until they were found, completely on accident, by a construction company preparing the land for new buildings. Turned over to the American government, the heroes were awakened and an attempt was made to slowly introduce them to the world they'd now found themselves in. This of course included Claire Voyant, the Black Widow. The revived crime fighters were provided with a house to share and given an offer. Essentially, they would be allowed to stay and receive free room and board for one full year after which time each would be given the choice to leave and retire to a civilian life or remain and operate under the Superhero Registration Act. However, while most of the others had their own demons, the Black Widow's was more literal. She was still bound by her deal with the devil, still sworn to be Satan's assassin. Under cover of night, she returned to her duties, collecting souls for her dark master. Meanwhile, another of the Twelve, Dick Jones, the Phantom Reporter, attempted to build a rapport with her. Claire was intrigued by Dick, but continued to keep him at arm's length. She also began frequenting a goth club, feeling more comfortable where she could blend in. There, she met a young woman named Laura who was fascinated by Claire. However, before their dalliance could blossom into a romance, Claire broke things off. 
Unwilling to pull an innocent woman into the deadly life she was forced to lead, the Black Widow cried tears of blood. But the Widow's murders did not go unnoticed, and when the police entrusted him with the details about the crime scenes, Dick Jones, the Phantom Reporter, was reminded of the rumors that once circulated about the Black Widow. One night, Dick confronted Claire in costume, seeking answers. The Black Widow decided to confide in the Phantom Reporter, but the story she told was a different tale from the one we already know. She claimed that in 1928, her sister Deborah was murdered by a Los Angeles mobster named Lester Maddox. Standing over her sister's grave, Claire Voyant swore she would do anything to avenge her, and that is where the devil first spoke to her. The demon offered Claire the power to take revenge. He would make her an ageless killer, and in exchange, she would belong only to him. Claire agreed and thus became the Black Widow. Her first act with this new power was then to kill Lester Maddox and avenge her sister. She also insisted that while she became the Devil's Killer, she only ever brought him the blackened evil souls of men deserving of such a fate. The discrepancies between the two versions of the Black Widow's origin, one occurring in 1928 and the other in 1940, is yet to be addressed, but there are two likely explanations. One is simply that Claire was lying to the Phantom Reporter in an effort to portray herself as more sympathetic, and the other is as follows. During World War II, many costumed heroes signed up with the American government to aid in the war effort. For some of these heroes, the propaganda office commissioned comic books showcasing fictionalized versions of their exploits, but greatly embellishing on events. It's possible that the Black Widow's origin as originally presented in the pages of Mystic Comics was an example of this, a fictional version of events based on rumor and speculation. Or perhaps things are more complicated than either, and the real truth lies somewhere in between. In either event, Dick believed Claire enough for the two to continue staying under the same roof, and they slowly grew closer. However, their shared home was later destroyed in a battle against the Dynamic Man, a rogue android who was also one of the Twelve. The Phantom Reporter left with several others to confront the Dynamic Man, but not before receiving a kiss from the Black Widow. In the ensuing battle, another hero, the Fiery Mask, was killed, but passed his flaming power on to the Phantom Reporter, who used it to destroy the Dynamic Man. After that, with their home destroyed, the surviving members of the Twelve were relocated to a nearby army base. However, the Widow decided to leave, still bound to the whims of her Dark Master. She asked Dick to go with her, but he was unable to turn his back on the others. The two shared one more kiss before Claire disappeared into the night sky. After this, the others eventually left one by one until the Phantom Reporter was the last man remaining. He was given an apartment by Mastermind Excello, another of the Twelve who'd amassed a fortune from wise investments made before the war, and there he was reunited with the Black Widow, and the two became a couple. You see, Mastermind Excello had also used his wealth to acquire one of the largest private investigation firms on the planet. And so the Black Widow and the Phantom Reporter joined forces as a crime-fighting duo working under Mastermind Excello to right wrongs and punish evildoers. However, the Widow remains bound to her true satanic master, sending the darkest souls back to him to suffer for the rest of eternity. And that is the history of Claire Voyant, the first Black Widow. But before we end off, let's take a look at what demonic abilities the Black Widow possesses. Perhaps most noteworthy is her power to kill with a flaming touch. The Widow has complete control over this power and will only activate when she wills it. When she does, it spells instant death for any man, leaving behind a Black Widow mark. However, it has only been demonstrated to work on flesh and blood humans, having no effect on androids. She can also teleport, even moving between Hell and Earth, but doing so typically produces a noticeable flash of light. She usually prefers to use her power of flight to travel. She has also claimed to be ageless and said that she does not require sleep, 
although she has been seen doing so. She is also superhumanly strong, potentially capable of lifting over 10 tons, but the upper limits of her strength have not yet been verified as she does not typically rely on brute force. Despite assumptions to the contrary by the Phantom Reporter, she has even been shown to be bulletproof. She can commune with her Dark Lord seemingly from anywhere, and her connection to Hell even allows her to sense whether or not a person's soul has been damned there. Since her powers are mystic in nature, she can also manifest them in unexpected ways, such as the power to heal others and restore lost limbs. And so she may yet possess any number of unseen powers. Well, that's all I've got for you this week, but here's a question for those of you that made it all the way to the end of the video. Who do you think would win in a fight between Clairvoyant and Natasha Romanoff? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like this video, leave it a like, share the video, and subscribe for more marvelous content. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!